Hey, it's Ali. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are talking about being puppy cat. But first, we need to acknowledge two things. Number one, I figured out how to undock the microphone from its docking thing, its handle, whatever it's called. You just had to unscrew the sides. So, no more hearing. <laughs> oh, that looks horrible on the audio. <laughs> also, for some reason, autofocus was not on on the camera. Autofocus is on the camera now, so everything should be in focus. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, I've been doing this for two years. You think I would have figured it out by now? So with that all out of the way, let's talk about being puppy cat lazy in space. Being puppy cat was originally a web series created by Channel Federator on their YouTube channel back in 2013. And 13 year old me was obsessed with it, gagged, truly gooped and gagged. Being puppy cat had the Tumblr girlies gagged, rightly so, for years. Years they had the Tumblr girl was gagged. It like, I don't wanna say it invented a new aesthetic, but like in the time that space and pastel were such a big thing on Tumblr, B and Puppy Cat just slid right into there, right into home. And the girlies, oh, we ate that up. We ate it up. The show originally had 10 episodes with the hopes that it would be picked up by a bigger company and be turned into a full show. And it did almost 10 years later, but hey, Netflix, better late than never. I guess. And you know, I always have to say this, but if you were like me, being puppy cat definitely shifted around your brain chemistry. So the fact that this came out a whole 10 years later, oh boy, uh, we gotta talk about it, of course. And as relatable as it was back then, it's even more relatable now to my 22 year old self. So without further ado, let's jump in to being puppy cat lazy in space. If at any time you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe because I make videos like this all the time. And comment down below how you got into being puppy cat. Was it through the OG show? Was it when they re-put the videos on YouTube back in 2018? Or are you just getting into it now? Just let me know down in the comments below and let's jump into it. I think the most striking thing about being puppy cat and something that also might turn off people who first watch it and don't really get it is that everything seems to happen in a random series of events. And yeah, when you look at it from a surface level, it definitely can seem that way. The show follows B, a 22 year old girl who can barely keep a job and take care of herself, but for some reason she still wants another thing to take care of, which is the first thing I, if I've learned anything through struggling <laughs> in my 20s so far is that I know that a cat would just solve all of my problems. I don't know how, considering the fact that I'm broke and a cat, you need money to take care of a cat, but I know it would solve all of my problems regardless. Like 90% of my problems would be solved with a cat. So I, I get it. I get the whole thing about like wanting a cat, despite the fact that you can barely take care of yourself. I think it gives you a sense of like responsibility. It's like, oh, I, sure, I can't take care of myself, but I'm definitely gonna take care of this cat. I'm gonna make sure the cat is fed. I'm gonna make sure it's it has stuff to play with. I'm gonna make sure it lives the best life possible. And I think in doing that, your life gets better because you have to have a clean space for the cat, right? So you have to clean. You have to feed the cat, right? So you might as well feed yourself while you're at it. It's just the psychology of it all. <laughs> so she wishes for something to take care of and poof, puppy cat lands right in front of her, pretty much. Except puppy cat isn't a cat, puppy cat's a puppy cat alien thing anyway she's like oh yay now i have a pet to take care of and thus begins the adventure shenanigans and basically that's what the show's about trying to survive in a world where you have no idea what the hell you're doing you know minus the neon genesis level of existentialism and the pastel cosmic horror and absurdist imagery and pastel cyberpunk world okay okay obviously there's more to that there's an overarching plot concerning who puppy cat is because he did come from space and b concerning who she is in her life and and the overarching cosmic horror hands that are like constantly after them. But at the heart of it all is just a girl trying to get through life. Each episode almost feels like a fever dream after inhaling too much fun dip powder. Y'all know that episode of Gravity Falls where Mabel eats all that like fake fun dip thing and she like starts hallucinating. Yeah, that's that's basically what being puppy cat is at times. It's often disjointed and can be very confusing, especially to newer viewers. But in all honesty, I think that works in favor of the overarching story, the aesthetic of it all, and the morals that you're supposed to be learning along the way. In fact, there are many times where the backgrounds of like certain scenes are just backgrounds. Like they're not, 
actual like backgrounds they're just like plain space it's just space or it's like cosmic or like whatever i don't know how to explain it so obviously i'm gonna put it on screen but like it just there's no background like they're not at a train station they're not at someone's house like the background almost falls away to show this like cosmic whatever the heck and because of that a lot of the scenes can get very surreal at times the birthday episode still goes crazy though and it makes me cry every time like the end scene with b and puppy cat dancing i i had that gif saved on my computer for years years crying crying in the club however while some might see this as a con to the show i think it adds a lot to the overall message when you think about it in a way that is more of an artistic choice than it just happening you start to see those scenes in an entirely different light like the moral or lesson technically of every episode is somehow completely subtle and also not subtle at all each episode touches on a different part of growing up like letting go of past mistakes the guilt of moving on to start your own life and the pressure that comes along with it, choosing yourself over work, the emotional maturity that is often unfairly thrust upon kids, trying to maintain relationships both romantically and platonically, loneliness, and of course, never ever knowing what the hell is going on at any one given time in your life. It's like every single word that came out of someone's mouth at any given moment was so fucking relatable <laughs> like i don't know how to explain every time someone spoke i was like oh yeah no you're right everything had like this double meaning that like it was a joke i don't this had to be intentional right everything had like this double meaning like it had a meaning like a literal meaning within the scene of the episode and then a whole nother meaning to like life and stuff i and like maybe that's just me reading way too into things but like honestly <laughs> like my heart absolutely broke when cardamon was asking around why is no one helping me why aren't the adults acting like adults and at that point i was just like like no for real why isn't someone helping him he is a child why is a child being a landlord and like everyone just kind of goes along with it which is a whole nother thing is that on the island specifically everyone kind of just goes along with all of the absurdity and doesn't really think anything of it which obviously can be like a double meaning for like life in general and how we kind of just float through it and kind of just let shit happen and think that it's normal but it's not normal which is something that is like brought up at the end of the show where someone from you know not the island comes to the island and is like um this is not normal and of course like Cass is like finally someone says it but it's like also girl you could have also stood up and said something a child is your landlord help him <laughs> the aesthetic serves the absurdity of the show really well super pretty yet melancholy bright and full of light and yet somehow still lonely silly yet so relatable it really reminds me of why i was drawn to the show so much in the first place Yes, of course, like I said earlier, space and pastel colors on Tumblr and on the internet were like the thing back in like 2013, 2014. But I really feel like, especially now with this remake, they were able to take that aesthetic and develop it even further. Like everything is nice and crisp and bright, which is something that someone might worry about when trying to match the show with its tone, but having a completely pastel uh, color palette, like the color palette still is able to match the tone despite it being lighter pastel colors and the deep contrast with the antagonist of the series the hands that are being these bright neon like rgb colors and then the black like it's just black and then red blue and green and that color palette like they stick to that color palette like there are times especially like when the tears are brought into that world and they're growing there are times where you think oh they're gonna grow into these pastel colors no they stay that rgb like intense like oppressive color palette which i just it fits so well and it's so like contrast as well i like can you tell i've really been into art and color theory lately but like especially in a show that is like completely pastel and completely cosmic to try and like put something that is supposed to be antagonistic in there they gave me the heebie-jeebies they did a real good job at giving me the heebie-jeebies those hands they were beautiful though the fucking claw oh the nails they got their who who the fuck did their na their nails were so pretty i wish i could just stick my hand in a bowl of goo and have my nails done 
That would save me so much time and money. Something that I think a lot about cosmic horror that I haven't really seen too much in media is this presence of it being all consuming yet not evil, if that makes sense. Something that I really like about cosmic horror and why I'm like drawn to it as a genre or a medium is the fact that it's not necessarily evil as it is just nature. Now, of course, these people or whatever the fuck they are, the antagonist in the show, we have no idea why they're after Puppy Cat. We have no idea why they keep like destroying pretty much worlds to try and get to Puppy Cat. We have no idea. And you don't learn at the end of the show either, so it's not even a spoiler. But while, yes, they are the antagonist of the show, they never seem evil, if that makes sense. Like they seem like very, I need to do what I need to do to get to where I need to get to. All of you are below me type of stuff. Like, and it really sets the like cosmic tone of it all, like the scale. I always love when people put an antagonist in a show that like you can tell the scale of just how big and oppressive they are. Like they don't really think twice about spoiler alert controlling Mooly at the end. They get, they don't give like think twice about that shit and they just do it. And they're like, oh, they don't care. And it's, so it's hard to put evil onto them. It's more like apathy. They don't care. And I just thought that was really cool. And I think their color palette just, it, this is a thing that like doesn't belong. And it just, it fits the show surprisingly very well. Life is so absurd. And I think this show perfectly captures that. Through B, I think the audience really learns to slow down, enjoy the absurdity of life and to kind of not knock the small things that make you happy in life. Like I can totally see a random person watching the show and just being like, I don't get it. Like, I don't, why is she, why are they, why do they act like this? The voice acting is also another thing that like, if someone was watching this show for the first time would be like, mm, seems a little unprofessional to me. But like the longer you watch it, the more you're like, no, no, it makes sense. It makes sense that the, the voice acting is really chill, laid back, not completely perfect. Like almost like they were doing this in one take, like those Sonic fan dubs, but like it works. <laughs> like don't know how to explain it, but it works. Like some would say that that would be a con to the show, but because of how absurd the show is, it's definitely a pro in this case. And it's a lot like Adventure Time in that way. Like it's absurd, but it's one of the most relatable, heavy, real things you've ever watched. Like it's very clear that everyone has some semblance of self-awareness about all the weird things that are going on. Like I said before with Cass being like, this is weird. And like, she gets really frustrated that it's weird, but like no one talks about it. It's like this very big unkept secret, like especially with B. Like it's this big, very unkept secret, but like no one wants to talk about it and no one wants to talk about it because it would be awkward or weird or just lead to more questions. And it really frustrates a lot of the people on the island. And you can see that frustration come out specifically in Cass towards the end. And she kind of lashes out at B a little and then she kind of reels herself in because it's like B didn't ask for any of this, right? Like she didn't ask to be here. She's just here. And Cass is able to like reel herself in and be like, mm. Yeah, I love Cass. She's one of my favorite characters. And you know what? Maybe they have to be absurd for the level of rawness some of these lines exhibit sometimes. He's still depressed. You can be depressed in pants. What do you want to be when you grow up? Everything. You know, like funny lying. He needs help. Not from us though. I taught him how to joke and he punked me. I'm sorry. Okay, that last one wasn't really <laughs> a raw line, but it was just really funny in that moment. I really love that line. It's one of my favorites. I love that not every scene has context. Like, is that dog okay? As soon as I start speaking again, he starts barking. Anyway, I love that not every scene has context, especially in the dream sequences, because dreams in this show serve as also memories and flashbacks. So it can be a little complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Usually every dream sequence in this show doubles as a memory for someone. And so it can be a little difficult to try and pick out what was a dream and what was actually this person's memories. And especially the scene where puppy cat has a dream about B being a baby. It's like, okay, was this a dream or is this just like a memory or is it a memory in a dream? I think it's both. <laughs> I think it's a memory in a dream. So Puppy Cat is like having this dream about a memory 
it, at the same time, his dream is be being a baby because it feels like he's taking care of her in some way. But at the same time, Puppy Cat is having this memory of crashing to Earth and possibly seeing Baby B, even though B was never a, a baby. Um, <laughs> and that's when I think the backgrounds that aren't really backgrounds really play an important role in this. They add to this like dreamlike nature of it all and kind of like a f very floaty nature. Like it gives all of the scenes a very floaty nature because if you ever made a drawing of like a stick figure in space or just a stick figure and had no background to it, it can seem like it's just floating through space, but you add a background to it and it grounds it. And so this show deliberately takes that background away or replaces it with something else to give it more of that floaty feel. Life is so serious and yet so unserious at the same time. Okay, I'm done talking about all the serious existential shit. Let's talk about some of the funny shit that happens in the show. Obviously the aesthetic of it all be these outfits when she does her temp jobs with puppy cat oh i have never sewn a day in my life but i want to learn how to sew to make those outfits especially my favorite outfit was her in the like temp uniform like the actual temp uniform that like kind of looks like a race car jumpsuit and it had like these uh like checkered patterns on it and then like these other kind of flowy patterns at the bottom bro and her hat that had the checkered like it was a plain hat and then had a checkered pattern at the bottom whoever was in charge of costume designing for all of her outfits oh i will be drawing all of those follow me on instagram if you want to see them at ali underscore underscore dreamer thank you puppy cat's outfits were also very very cute speaking of puppy cat if you didn't know puppy cat is voiced by a vocaloid named art art no olivia oliver <laughs> why can i not get that name right Puppy Cat is voiced by a vocaloid named Oliver. <laughs> and honestly, it just makes sense at this point because I was wondering how they did Puppy Cat's voice. I think it's always been like that. The songs bang, they bang. All of Puppy Cat's song bang. And now you know why, because he's a vocaloid. Now the whole thing with the aesthetic, the pastel colors usually, okay, usually for me, I, I'm not the biggest fan of pastel colors. I am more of a neon, bright, sa heavily saturated colors kind of gal when it comes to artwork, when it comes to fashion or anything like that. I do have a soft spot in my heart for pastel, obviously because of, you know, Tumblr, duh. But in terms of a whole show being pastel, you think that you would get like kind of tired of it after a while, but everything is still very bright and cheerful. Like they take it to another level. And I can't really explain it to you without you watching it. Like, go watch it, obviously, go watch the show. But like they take pastel to a whole nother level and it's not just pastel. That makes no sense. But like, just believe me, understand. Obviously I'm gonna put some B-roll on the screen and you can see for yourself. But like, they take it to a whole nother level. Like they really develop it. They're not afraid to mess with other hues and other colors just because you have a pastel like color palette. Like it doesn't get tiring at all, at least to me. Overall, being puppy cat lazy in space is like a warm hug from a friend who just gets it. I understood the absurdity of it all back in 2013. And now that I am 22 and 2022, I understand it even more so now being a broke adult this show was nine years in the making and it was incredibly worth it so thank you being puppy cat for the reminder that life is kind of absurd and the reminder also to laugh through it all i gotta say this quickly because i have 30 seconds but thank you so much for watching this video especially all the way to the end you are a real one if you want to catch me at any of my social medias down below they'll be linked down below they'll also be on the screen after this uh tumblr instagram and twitter are the best places to reach me i also make tiktoks now so go follow me on tiktok being puppy cat was really a cultural reset she's a fashion icon and this show means a lot to me. So if you haven't watched it already, please go watch it. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Peace.